So I got my fancy autometer 2362 gauge out. I was trying to twist it, end up cracking the lens. So just so you know, you can put it in your vise. You can take a Dremel tool like this with a little cutoff wheel there. And if you go and you cut on both sides of this metal lens, you can actually just break that apart like so. Let me show you what happens here. Take that off and then boom. And then you can actually you know, take the broken glass off like that and then pop the whole thing out. Boom, just like that. So, the whole point of doing that was because I wanted to have this in place of this. See, that's the factory ammeter and this is the volt. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna convert this into the factory charger uh, setup. So stay tuned as I hook all this up for 12 volt instead of ammeter amp reading. But this is giving an idea. Part number 2362 will do it. I bought this other gauge, but after looking at it, it was just a little too small. It wasn't gonna look as good. It was part number 2356. But anyway, um, yeah, that's gonna work out good. And it's pretty dang close to this one. So stay tuned, we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm not gonna show you every little step, but I got the dash cluster out of the 68, and you flip it over, you take the trim panel off, then you take the little bezel cluster out. Pull it off real easy here for you to see it. And then you basically undo the alternator gauge, which is here. It's got some screws on the back, you take the screws off or the uh, nuts off to hold it. I had to modify my bezel a little bit. You'll see I had to actually move the holes up. So I drilled new holes and that way the, the new autometer gauge actually moves up slightly. So that way the, the gauge kind of sits up a little more so it's more in line where I want it to be. Just so you can see that. Just a little drilling some holes there. It only goes up a certain amount and it bottoms out on the bottom of this. But you'll, when you get there, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then from there, remember when I told you I had to cut the bezel, the black bezel around the top? I think I have some uh, put up here in my vise. Oh, there it is. All right, so uh, this is half of the gauge bezel. See where I kind of messed it up while I was trying to get it out. Wouldn't unscrew, I had to cut it in half. But anyway, I took half of it and I put it on the gauge and I just got through gluing it, just some rubber cement here. But I got my vise holding it just so I can kind of put some rubber cement on the back side of it here where we'll get in the gauge and get it where it makes contact. Now, you will notice this strategically cut absolutely perfect. So it lines up with about the 10 and goes over to the right hand side there at the bottom of the gauge. And that's on purpose because when you go to put it on here, and you go to put the trim plate on, the inner part of the trim plate actually would hit it if the gauge went all the way around. So I had to keep manipulating it and moving it until it lined up and then this drops down. And the reason you want that part of the bezel in there is because if not, it's open in here and the light shines in and it doesn't look right. So what I did was I took my shop light here, I put it under, I took the bulb out and I let it shine in here and kind of covered it to see what kind of light I was going to have going to the gauge. And I got it where it looks factory now. So uh, once this fully cures out and dries, I'm going to take this off, clean up the edges of that metal cut a little bit, put a little bit of black paint on it, and then drop it in here, uh, put it back together. Um, to wire it up in the car, all I need is plus 12 volt and a ground, and then it's going to be just fine so part of that out here this what looks like a rat's nest right now is actually some leftover parts from the old ignition setup of the 68 which all this is going away 
I'd actually added a body fuse before. So you'll notice uh, this is the red wire upgrade I did because mine was uh, messed up. And then you've got the black wire here that goes to the alternator. They're both in the same plug that comes out here. It doesn't go through the car anymore for the load. So just to recap, the wire from the alternator goes to here to fully charge the battery all the time. And then the existing wire that went into the car and this one are gonna to tie together. They both give 12 volts to the car. They're gonna go through a fuse, which goes down to here. So that's how we're gonna rewire it. So it's 12 volt in the car, but not the high amps. The amps are gonna stay outside the car where the alternator is gonna charge the battery all the time. I may not use that starter relay. Um, we're gonna have a different kind of setup with the new engine and the new wiring harness I'm getting. So I may get a different kind of battery bus bar, you know, I'm thinking about how I'm gonna do that. Uh, it comes with a new fuse block with the new wiring harness. So I may do something different where I use that as part of my power feed. I may get a different fuse block that I might put over in here. Uh, I haven't decided yet. That's a part of it. I'm still trying to figure out. But just to give you an idea how we're gonna power it. And then in here, all I have to do is take the existing two wires that are for the ammeter and I just tie them together. Most people hook them together and put heat shrink on it. And I stuck it back together. So this is what it looks like. There's the gauge. It looks pretty close. Just at first glance, it looks pretty close. I think I'm gonna like it. Yep. Just at first glance, can't really tell it. Now it says auto gauge. I'm gonna get a label maker and change that so it says volts. Other than that. Hey, what's up YouTube? All right, so I forgot to show you how to test this gauge before you put it in. So one thing I didn't tell you about is you have to make sure you isolate the gauge from this uh, back of this cluster because it is a ground. It actually is metal and it actually can serve as a ground and short your terminals out. So that's what you wanna do. The factory gauge, the ammeter gauge, had like this plastic insulator that went across. It went across both sides. Let me show you what that looks like. So here's the factory ammeter gauge. And see this uh, plastic insulator, it's this black rectangular looking piece on the back. All right, that doesn't wanna come off very easy here, but there's two pieces, one on this side where it goes through and then one on this side. So I actually use the one that's out here on the back, but on the inside, a little MacGyver here, if you uh, know who MacGyver is from back in the day, you just take some like cardboard. So I just took a, a little box of screws here that I have, and I took off the flaps here, actually cut them, cut two pieces, cause it's pretty thin, cut it to the length of that uh, isolator I had, and drilled two little holes in it with the drill bit, just using my fingers to turn the drill bit and pushed it on the back there and put it on and then put the gauge in, put the isolator here and tighten it down. And now I've got my wire hooked here. Don't mind the red wires because that's just what I've got for jumpers. But uh, this is going to work out where the easiest way to tell you is where the tin is. That's the positive side and over here is the ground. So this is my ground going to my battery. I'm going to hook up my little positive terminal here. So we've got our Plug this into the back of the gauge. Matter of fact, let me set this down so you can see it. it might be easier. Do it like this so you can kind of see the gauge. All right, so there's your gauge. I'm gonna hook this up for power here. We're gonna touch it and see there? 12 volts. Touch it, 12 volt, let go, nothing. 12 volts, nothing. 12 volts, nothing. So when I turn the key on, I have 12 volts and that'll tell me the battery condition. When the alternator's running, it actually go up to like 13 and a half, 14 volts. So the difference here from the factory wiring is I need a 12 volt signal when I turn the key on going to this terminal and this terminal, I just need to go to ground. So I'll just have a wire going here, a black wire going from here to a ground. And then this wire is gonna be a hot 12 volt signal when I turn the key on. So that's all it is. Once you turn the key on, this gauge will start working and all data charges, that voltage should go up, indicating from the battery, or from the alternator to the battery, what the charge current is. So this gives you an idea um, how to wire in the volt gauge. 
and I did a little label maker and made my Volt sticker here for it. But, you know, very quick, down and dirty, how to make this work. You see where I kind of finagled that little metal piece to fit in there. But I wanted to show you what it looks like to make the gauge work. Without this isolated, you hook it up, it'll be a dead short. You go to power it up and the gauge won't work. And if you leave it on too long, it'll melt your wires. So you want to make sure you isolate that and then you're, you're set, you're good to go. Now we can put the bezel and all back on and uh, get ready to put back in the 68 charger right there. Just another little tip. All right, what's up you do? I want to give you a quick tech tip. As you see here, I've got my charger cluster and I just got through putting in my new uh, volt gauge there. Probably gonna blind you with the light, but there's the volt gauge installed I'm working on that video real quick but as i'm putting this thing back together what i wanted to show you was um because this stuff is pretty fragile you basically put the the lens on it and then i like to flip it over on a clean surface and put the cluster down so you can put the screws in here but you'll notice uh, a lot of times these screws when you go to put them in this plastic they don't tighten down very good so a fix for that is an old technician trick I will show you in my uh, 30 years of being a technician. So what you do is you just get some wire like so and you measure how deep the hole is where the screw goes in. So you'll see right here the length of this where the screw goes down. And uh, let's see if I've got my screw. I've probably already set it down, there it is. All right, so here's my screw that actually goes down in here. And before you say anything, no, that is not the right screw that came in it. It was, uh, these two screws were uh, kind of bad shape, so I had to replace them with some different ones. But anyway, it is the right uh, diameter, it just looks a little different. Anyway, the hole in the plastic here is just kind of big. It's just kind of stripped out is we're going to take some wire like this. We're gonna cut it. Well, actually it's probably easier if I go ahead and strip the wire like this. Okay. See that, we got our strands. We're gonna cut them like this. So we have strands of wire, see? Nothing too uh, crazy about that. So let's just do it again like this. All right, just to show you, here's the going in there, all right? All right, gonna strip those like that. Gonna twist them around. We're going to cut off the excess. Let's just use the whole bundle this time. See there, whole bundles in there. Now we're gonna put the screw in. And we're gonna start threading it down like so. Definitely feel some tension in there now. Now that's better. That's the tension I want to feel. So now, make sure we're tight. Get one more little tug on it. Okay, good. And now that's the tension I want. And that's gonna hold it tight like it should. It won't, it won't rattle, it won't come loose. So I got to do the same thing over here and then the dash will be tight. So old technician trick, um, if you've ever been working in your house and you have a screw going in the wood to hold the door frame or something, same kind of thing. Uh, you can actually take toothpicks and put them in the hole where the screws go. Uh, put a couple of toothpicks in there and put the screw in. It'll do the same thing. It'll tighten it up and pull the screw in tight and fix a, a wallet out hole if you want to call it just fine. So uh, just a few little life hacks, if you will, that I've picked up over the years that'll fix the problem. So uh, don't necessarily just get a big screw and cram it in there because you're end up gonna break the plastic, but I uh, just put a little bit of a wire like that in there. It'll tighten it right up, you're good to go.